Ignore the warning sign posted at the first tee. Bethpage Black Golf Course may well be extremely difficult and recommended only for highly skilled golfers, but the Black is the rare public golf course that's good enough to host major championships. Bethpage Black has hosted the 2002 and 2009 U.S. Opens and now the 2019 PGA Championship. It's a timeless design, 7,436 yards par 70 from the championship tees, ranked number 37 on Golf Digest's 100 Greatest. So forget about that sign. All golfers, good and bad, want to play the black. The first is a straightforward dogleg right par four off an elevated tee. Trees on the inside corner of the dogleg forces to hit driver in order to see the green. A steep front portion of the putting surface forces us to hit to the center or rear, and the putt back downhill is swift. Once we've holed out, it's through a tunnel beneath Round Swamp Road to the next 13 holes. Two is the shortest par four on the course and the most graceful curving left through a valley between hillsides of oaks to a well-bunkered hilltop green. The pros may use less than driver here because there's no advantage being too close to the green. The steep topography all but hides a view of the flag. Don't go left on the second shot, there's a steep bunker and 10-foot deep gully awaiting. Clearly, a ridge of a hill was flattened to create the par 3 third hole, which is a long iron of wood over a canyon to a diagonal green fronted by deep traps. The green used to fall away on the back left, but in 2015, Reese Jones had it regraded to support shots. Don't over club. Beyond the green is a deep chasm. There is practically no room for spectators on this hole. If the short par 5 fourth brings to mind Pine Valley, that's deliberate. The Black's design was a 1935 collaboration between Park Superintendent Joe Burbick, who lived on the property, and golf architect A.W. Tillinghast, who served as design consultant for $50 per day for 15 days. Tillinghast later wrote that it was Burbick who envisioned the black course be something comparable to Pine Valley as a great test to golf, thus the dramatic bunkering on this hole and elsewhere, most of it re-established and enhanced by Reese Jones. Five is arguably the best hole on the course, requiring a drive that bites off what you dare over a vast scrubland bunker on the right. Playing down the left side means the approach into the elevated green will be blocked by overhanging oak trees. The shallow green has subtle pockets in it, so even a three-foot putt is no certainty. The area beyond the green is a great spectator vantage point to watch play on five, six, and 12. Six is a curious two-level par four with a plateau fairway and a green 60 feet below it. The fairway bunkers aren't that far off the tee, so most players will bomb it over those bunkers to the bottom of the hill, leaving a wedge into a tiny green which has bunkers left and right, both of them bigger than the green itself. Seven normally plays as a 576 yard par five. But for majors, it's a par four played from the back of the regular tee box. The strategy on this dogleg right is to cut the corner over another scrubland bunker and have the ball run as far to the left side of the fairway as possible to avoid overhanging trees on the right. The green looks flat, but there's some definite contour in the back left portion. A pond short of the eighth green is the only water on the course and has been in play ever since Reese extended the front of the green forward some 15 yards. For majors, the slope dropping down to the pond is shaved tight, like at Augusta National's 12th and 15th greens. A back bunker was discovered hidden in tall grass when the course was first restored. In 2017, Reese elevated that bunker to make it more intimidating. Nine is the toughest tee shot on the course. Uphill over gullies and a corner bunker to a tabletop that only the longest hitters will reach. All others would be playing second shots from a steep right to left slope in the fairway to a flag visible on the horizon. The ninth fairway ends some 50 yards short of the green, so distance control is crucial. Flashy greenside bunkers left and right await anything short or offline. The tenth fairway curls along right-hand bunkers, giving wide berth to a string of dunes-like bunkers on the left 
installed by tilling as to fill a wide open expanse. Again, the fairway ends short of the green, this time with a steep swale before the shallow putting surface, which is fronted by steep bunkers and backed by a relatively new chipping area. Playing parallel to the 10th in the opposite direction and sharing the same left-hand rough of imitation sand dunes, the 11th has a bunch more bunkers on the right and a far more complicated green. It's tilted like the deck of a sinking ship with waves of sand around it. A new pin position in the back left has been created specifically for the 2019 PGA. On the par 4 12th, the average golfer from the regular tee is simply trying to avoid the huge bunker in the left in order to leave a second shot of around 200 yards. But the average tour pro will fly it over the far left corner of that bunker, or even over trees farther left, to have a short iron approach into the green. For them, this hole plays at the same length as the par 5 fourth, but is much simpler. The long par 5 13th has two fairway bunkers left off the tee that may throttle back some turf rows, which then brings the cross bunker 35 yards short of the green into play on the second shot. If one lays up in two, the cross bunker will hide the view of the putting surface for the third shot. For those going for it in two, the green is rather small with a hillside of nasty rough behind. So most will likely play 13 as a three shot hole. 14 is a simple shot over a pit and a deep bunker to a big green shaped like a triangle. The farther right the flag, the longer the carry. Once you replace the flag, it's down the hill and back beneath Round Swamp Road to the four extremely testing finishing holes. The toughest hole in two U.S. Opens at the Black was the 15th, which is surprising because it has no fairway bunkers. But the tiny green is positioned 50 feet above, benched in a hillside. In the face of the hill are what Reese calls lethal bunkers, and the two-tiered green is the hardest on the course to putt. 16 is not as long as it looks because the tee shot drops 60 feet, but it's tight off the tee with trees left and right, although there's actually plenty of room at the bottom of the hill. The fairway curves left, but the diagonal green points to the right, meaning the big right-hand bunker will come into play on many approach shots. From the tee, it's hard to see much of the putting service at 17 because of all the yawning bunkers. The green, the widest and most shallow on the course, has distinct high left and low right sections. The hillside behind has been cleared of trees to accommodate spectators. Add to that gallery grandstands tee to green and 17 becomes a miniature Yankee stadium during championship week. When Reese Jones first redesigned the short par 4 18th in 1999, he added 50 yards in length, cut the green size in half, and pinched the fairway with two massive clusters of freeform bunkers. In 2018, he returned to remove the hourglass nature of the fairway, making it more uniformly wide. His purpose is to discourage use of an iron off the last tee, taunting pros into using a wood, maybe even a driver, to run the gantlet. After all, 18 has a small green designed for a short iron approach and a potential birdie. Champions don't lay up on the 18th hole.